I saw a post on Google Plus earlier by Adam Outler, another person who makes videos on XDA like I do, and the gist of the post was Bill Gates' dream a while back was that everyone should be able to have an affordable computer in their home. And the funniest thing about it to me was the first comment that someone made on this post basically saying, and it took Linux to make it happen. Yes, that dream is available today. There is an affordable computer out there that you can use for general everyday stuff, and it is called the Raspberry Pi. I, like many of you, placed an order for this back in March. Mine showed up just a few days ago, and so let's go ahead and do a quick unboxing of it. As you can see, I've already got it unboxed. I'm just gonna sort of recap what happened when I unboxed it myself. Of course, first things first, it came in a plain white box, says Element 14 on it because that's who I ordered it from, Element 14, also known as Newark Computing. Uh, their communication leaves a lot to be desired, but at least it did get to me eventually, and they worked really well with me on the fact that over the course of three months, my billing address and my shipping address both changed because I moved and I changed jobs. But one way or another, it's pretty much a plain white box with a couple of compliance logos on it. Once you open it up, there's a small piece of paper in there. It doesn't say a whole lot on it, so I'm not going to go into it. And then the meat of the package itself, you've got the Raspberry Pi in a relatively plain static bag. And once you open that bag, you get to see the meat of the Raspberry Pi itself. As you can see here in my hand, I have it. It has two USB ports, an Ethernet port, an attachment for a camera, I believe, an attachment for an LCD. Uh, there is a camera that's in the works. I think it's a five megapixel version, but I saw a 14 megapixel at one point. I think that would be too high quality, so I think they did scale it back to five. Uh, here we have HDMI. We have the micro USB where you end up using power. Uh, all these GPIO headers where you can connect different things to it. I haven't figured all of that out yet, so I'm going to that in a later video probably. Uh, you have the uh, composite, the RCA jack here for video, and then a three and a half millimeter headphone jack there for audio. And that's pretty much the meat of it. I mean, you've got the Samsung system on a chip here. Uh, it does 1080p HD video decoding, no encoding as far as I know. Uh, but so this can be used as a an XBMC type system. It can be used as any sort of HTPC if you wanted to hook it up to your TV and watch those 1080p Blu-ray rips that you've done or whatever. Oh, the one key component that I did forget to mention a minute ago. It has an SDHC slot, or SD or SDHC, whichever you prefer. So essentially you take whatever OS it is you want to load on this, you stick it on this little SD card, you plunk it in the bottom, you plug in your micro USB and whatever else you want to attach to it, and it just goes. Now, like I said, I received this a few days ago. The first thing, of course, that I did was I hooked it up. I had my friend John here with me. You may remember John from the Galaxy Nexus video I put up a little while back. But we downloaded the Debian image from the raspberrypi.org website. It comes with the traditional suite of developer tools. It comes with a graphical user environment that doesn't automatically start, but you can start it if you want to. From what I understand, it's not quite the one you really ought to be using for the long term. It is a good place to start, though. There's one also called Raspbian that is supposed to be optimized for the Raspberry Pi. And of course there's also the Arch Linux version and Fedora and some others that I do intend to try out over time. I maybe will try it out and do a review of how they work on it and how performance is, if any of them perform better than the other. Who really knows? But anyway, without further ado, let me go ahead and hook up the Raspberry Pi and just show you the quick boot up sequence and, and how everything connects together and just essentially what you can do with it. Alright, so here you can see the things that I consider to be kind of essential to running the Raspberry Pi. We have the Raspberry Pi itself, we have the SDHC card, in my case I'm using a 4 gig, 15 megabit per second SanDisk Ultra 2 card, have an HDMI connection hooked up to a monitor, which I've got over here, I have my Ethernet adapter, my Ethernet cable at least, a keyboard connection, and then a micro USB connection, which was completely out of focus, but you know, we'll deal with it. So at this point we can just start hooking the device up. So last thing I'm going to plug in is actually the micro USB because that provides power. I'll see if I can do this in a way that you can actually see what I'm doing. Plug the USB keyboard in, plug the HDMI cable here in the side, and by the way I have grounded myself before doing any of this so uh, no shocks, no static, no anything. I would highly recommend picking up a case if you can find one. I have not looked thoroughly enough to find one yet though. They look to be about 10 bucks if you, if you look online. Anyway, so at this point, as you see, I've hooked up the keyboard, the Ethernet, the HDMI for video. I'm going to stick the SDHC card in the bottom, so you kind of flip it over and slide it up in there. 
And at this point, we are ready to power it on. So the micro USB cable will be the last thing to put in. And at this point, I actually thought it might be beneficial to go ahead and switch over to the TV I've got it hooked up to so you can just sort of see what happens whenever you power it on. So again, I'm gonna be hooking this uh, micro USB cable up in just a second. And then we cross our fingers. All right. And there you go, we've got all sorts of the terminal startup be goodness. I'm not sure if you can see it, but up in the upper left-hand corner you have that Raspberry Pi logo. Just generally going through everything Linux needs to start itself up. I see there the uh, hardware extraction layer, OpenBSD secure server, uh, SSH server, there we go. And we're at the Raspberry Pi login at this point, so I can go ahead and give it my information. But just so you know, it does say Debian GNU Linux 6.0 Raspberry Pi meaning it is the Raspberry Pi version that was compiled specifically for this, even though it's not entirely CPU optimized. Anyway, let me go ahead and log in. So I'll just give it my info. And that's it. By default, you're greeted by a terminal, and that is about it. Uh, personally, what I've been using this for is an IRSSI server and an SSH server. So if I want to, I can type in screen, which will get me into, as you could probably guess, screen. And when I hit space, there we go. I'm at another command line, which you probably can't see particularly well. There we go, maybe just a little bit better now. Okay, now from here, if I type in IRSSI, here in just a few seconds, you see the blue lines that showed up. There we go. It is making the connection to Freenode. It's getting all my information. And here in just a second, yeah, it connects to all the channels that I am currently logged into and here and just say, there we go. There's all the people that are in my IRC channel. Uh, yeah, I can go back and forth between channels very easily, very quickly. It's uh, an awfully high, sort of a high powered device to be using this for, but with this, I can run, like I said, my IRC client that I can access from anywhere in the world. I can run my bot that will help to manage the channel. Uh, in fact, anything else that I wanted to do that's server related, server stuff a lot of times doesn't take a whole lot of processing power. So th that's a really good option. However, just to go ahead and throw this out there, if you want to, you can go ahead and type in start X from the same thing. Uh, user's not authorized to run the X server. Turns out I have not, I have not tried to run X. All right, and we are back after a bit of noobishness on my part. Uh, like I said, I created a new user on this Raspberry Pi image, so I apparently haven't given it all the permissions that it needs to be able to start the X server. So from what I can see here, you do have to reconfigure your X settings. So sudo dpkg reconfigure x11 common. Then we cross our fingers. All right, and it does say root only, console users, or anybody. I'm gonna go ahead and say anybody just because it's not likely that someone's going to get into this. And if I run start X now, there we go. Now the problem with this, the obvious thing that you probably have noticed that I have not, is once this starts up, I don't have a mouse because I didn't hook one up. But I can go ahead and get one. But as you can see here, it is running LXDE. However, it does look like I can browse around a little bit without a mouse, just because the other one, the only one I've got, other than the one that's already hooked up to my computer, is on the other end of the house. So if I hit Control Escape, there we go. I can bring up the menu. I can sort of browse through what comes with it. Uh, sound and video stuff, programming stuff. There's actually a decent amount of programming stuff in there. Uh, other, there's going to be quite a bit of other stuff. Lots and lots of different things that you can do. Uh, internet, there's a couple of, yeah, Midori, the web browser, very lightweight. Scratch and Squeak for education. Scratch, I think, is a kid's programming environment, so that's something I need to look into. When my little boy gets a little older, we may start playing with that. And then, of course, the traditional other LXDE-based utilities. So, uh, as far as performance in a graphical environment, not amazing, but it's not really expected to be. This is a, I think it's a 700 megahertz uh, system on a chip, ARM v6. It's like an ARM 11, ARM v6 architecture with 256 megs of RAM, so it's not gonna be the absolute best and fastest thing you've ever seen, but it will definitely get the job done. I mean, especially if you're using it for video decoding or like I said earlier, for uh, server type stuff, but it definitely does get the job done for me and for 35 bucks plus a couple of dollars to ship it, definitely worthwhile. 
But anyway, I think that is going to be about all from me for today. That is just a quick unboxing and a first look at the Raspberry Pi. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of what I'm going to call Tech Tuesday. I've got a bunch more things in store, and I'm going to be doing some geek stuff on this same day in the future, so keep your eyes open for that. Later in this week, I do intend to do a vlog as followed by a... Ba -da -da -da, this week in Linux news, hopefully on Saturday. But as always, if you like this content, make sure to hit that like button down below and hit the subscribe button up above to be notified whenever I put out new content. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.